welcome to the Bible Study Hour. We are so happy that we can join you again this week for another study from God's Holy Word. Thank you so much for joining us as well. We are happy to have our pastors here, Pastor James Sunlin and Pastor Alan Mort. They join me, Lorna Stevenson, and together we share with you as we go through this powerful lesson that we have for study this week. We are still in the series of the great controversy, and that is where we fit in our lesson number eight at this time, which talks about light from the sanctuary. Before we get into the study of God's word, we just hope that you have your Bibles with you, and you also have your study guide. But whatever it is, hold that Bible close to you, because that's where we are going to be sticking. That is our text, and we will stay with it. Before we open to do the study, we ask you to join us in our opening prayer. Our Father, the great I am, we need your Holy Spirit to give us understanding, to give us wisdom, that even as we go through this, your words about the sanctuary, your people will get the understanding. Guide us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Viewers, you will recall that when we had our previous study, that last study, we referred to a particular verse in Daniel which talked about, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. After a certain period of time, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Now this week we are focusing on light from the sanctuary. And we have a memory text which comes to us from Hebrews chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, which says, we, we have, have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord erected and not man. You know, pastors, we're going to hold our comment a little bit on this memory text as we take up what is said in the last line of the text, which says, which the Lord erected and not man. Right. So we're going to go straight into a passage in the Bible which tells us about a sanctuary that man erected. Yes. And see how that is connected with this sanctuary that we are talking about here. All right. So we go to Exodus chapter 25. And we are looking at verses 8 and 9 and verse 40. The Bible says, And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall he make it. In verse 40, And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was showed thee in the mount. All right. Here we have a scene before us where God is speaking mm -hmm. with Moses, his servant, the leader of the children of Israel. Right. And he said to Moses, Moses, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, etc., etc." Now you fill in for us some of the etc. that we are talking about. <laughs> what well, sort of instruction did God give? So he, here is the situation. Mm -hmm. They're coming out of Egyptian bondage. Right. And God wanted them to, to worship him. And he wanted them to have a place of worship where their focus would be. And God's desire was that he wanted to be with them. Yes. And the sanctuary was to be a place where God would come and make his presence seen and felt that he was among his people. So the sanctuary was this, you know, uh, place like a tent. Mm -hmm. That was made with its different compartment. Out the front, you have the outer court. Then you have the holy place and the most holy. Right. So that the priest, those who are the Levites of the Levites tribe, they would be able to minister in that sanctuary 
on behalf of the people so that each one can have an opportunity to, to have their sins being dealt with by right. God. Mm -hmm. yes. Good. And in the instructions, I, I think there are some reminders that were put in there as well. Go ahead, Pastor Moore. The, the lesson states that the term sanctuary, as used in the Bible, refers first to the tabernacle built by Moses as a pattern or a type of heavenly things. The second to the true sanctuary in heaven to which the earthly sanctuary pointed. At the death of Christ, the typical service lost, uh, no, lose is important, our uh, lost is important. So All right, the, go ahead. So therefore, when Moses was given the vision of the, the sanctuary, the potter, he, he, you know, he should copy it off it of the, the heavenly sanctuary. Now the heavenly sanctuary is, is better than the earthly sanctuary. And so therefore, you know, we understand through this prophecy that there is two, uh, there are two sanctuaries, the earthly sanctuary and the heavenly sanctuary. All right. One of the things that we find very focused and important in all of this and in the instructions that God gave to Moses is that, Moses, remember what I showed you? Mm -hmm. Remember the pattern I showed yes. you? All of these details I'm telling you what to do and so on. Mm -hmm. You just keep that pattern in view mm -hmm. because you must follow the pattern. Now, where did this pattern come from? It must mean that there was something before. Yes. That's right. That, you know, was being copied, yes. as it were, mm -hmm. in the best way it could be copied for mankind. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that takes us back to our memory text. Yes. Because remember, the memory text is talking about True. the ministering in the heavenly sanctuary. Mm -hmm. That's right. A minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle. That's right. Which the Lord erected and not man. Mm -hmm. So where did God get this pattern from to give to Moses? Well, from heaven itself. Amen. So we are establishing here in our study that this sanctuary ministry, this sanctuary service that was given to mankind was given to mankind as a copy of the sanctuary in heaven. That's right. And the service that that sanctuary offers. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. Let's look a little bit more now, a little more details as we go to Hebrews chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. Hebrews chapter 9. Yes. And it says, mm -hmm. it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifice than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Thank you. Now notice I skipped right to that reference because we're talking about establishing from Bible teaching mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that there is a heavenly sanctuary. Yes. Right. Good. But if we had spent some time, mm -hmm. the time that we don't have right now really, to read through sections of Leviticus chapter 16 and also Leviticus chapter 23, mm -hmm. we would get a lot of information about the whole structure of the sanctuary and the different, you know, apartments mm -hmm. and the different, you know, furniture mm -hmm. in the different compartments and the services and all that. So we are establishing here now, and you spoke earlier to that, Pastor Sunlin, about, you know, the court of the sanctuary and the holy place and the most holy and that yes. kind of a thing. So we are talking here now about in the holy of holies, which we sometimes refer to as the most holy. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Now, what are we learning from the passage in Hebrews about what obtains about this section and the services and the function in the most holy place? Well, we know that the sanctuary service had many lessons for the children of Israel to learn. Yes. They were to learn that sin is, is not acceptable by God. And they were to learn also that God is willing to forgive every repentant sinner. Mm -hmm. And so when the priest ministered, the priest would take that blood from the animals that was killed and the, the sacrifice put on the altar of burnt offering. Mm -hmm. And he would go inside the holy place and he would sprinkle the blood before the veil upon the horns of the altar and, and, and so forth. And then in the holy of holies is the place we call the most holy place where only the high priest once per year would enter we call that the day of atonement right and so symbolically that high priest is actually taking the sins on himself and would take it outside put on uh, that animal we call the scapegoat representing satan and that animal would be led away in the wilderness and would die to show that god one day will eradicate sin from the universe and the one who is the originator of the sin will ultimately bear and that is Satan. Yes. Now, on the day of atonement, it was the day that the, the high priest would cleanse the sanctuary. Right. Now, this is very important because the sin of Israel, you know, the sins of Israel were stored in the sanctuary. On the day of atonement, those sins are removed and put on the, the scapegoat, uh, the scapegoat. Now, when the, if the, when the people would afflict themselves on that day, anyone whose sin remained would be cut off, as the, the, as the lesson says, mm -hmm. uh, and they will no longer exist. So therefore, we will, they will have to make their calling election sure before the priest get out. And this is saying to us that um, the day of atonement refer to the, the, what the Lord is doing in the heavenly sanctuary. And it's called about judgment. Thank you. And, and let me just, just splice this little bit in here with all of what you have both said that as we view the sanctuary service and the functions of that took place then, mm -hmm. and the reference to the whole matter of the Day of Atonement, that special day that was set apart mm -hmm. for this ritual to take place, that Day of Atonement was also referred to as the cleansing of the sanctuary because right. symbolically, mm -hmm. that was what happened on that day. Right. That symbolically, the sins were removed. Mm -hmm. yes from the sanctuary, right. right? And as you explained also, that that same day was also a day of judgment. Yes. yes. So when we talk about the day of atonement, right. and we talk about the cleansing of the sanctuary, mm -hmm. and we talk about judgment, yes. we are all in the same space. Yes. Good. So as we view all of that as our background for more of what we are getting from this whole matter of light from the sanctuary, which you said earlier on, really refers to Christ's ministry in the heavenly sanctuary. We look at the judgment has come. And we are going to take three Bible references, not that we don't have more, but we think we can use these three in our study for this week. Daniel chapter 7. Verses 9 and 10. Let's see what that says. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Well, I hope we can, you know, re recall, keep that before us, but also listen to what Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 and 7 
is saying. It says, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Uh -huh. That's revelation for us. And we are going to put in the mix as well Revelation 22, verses 10 to 12. And he said unto me, Seal not the saying of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Mm -hmm. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Consider all of these under the caption, the judgment has come. Now, how do we tie all of it together? Well, you know, judgment for many persons is a very scary thing. And um, what we have to re remember, first of all, is that God makes provision to take care of the sins of humanity. Mm -hmm. But God will not tolerate sin forever. That's right. He will have to get rid of sin. And hence, the judgment is necessary so that he can give the reward of those who are faithful, who have surrendered their lives and have received forgiveness. But he also has to, he also must get rid of sin. And so every unrepentant sinner, along with the devil and his angels, will ultimately be destroyed. So I think the best thing is that we need to make the choice to be on God's side. Good. To have our sins taken care of. And judgment is not a fearful thing for those who are walking with God. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. William Miller has studied the 2,300 days. And as the prophecy said that, and to, you know, and to, uh, the prophecy declared that uh, and the, at the end of this 2,000 days, then shall the sanctuary... 2,300 days, days, then, then shall, shall the sanctuary, sanctuary be cleansed. Be cleansed. Mm -hmm. And we discovered last week that it, is, it started 457 you know, B.C. and it ended in 1844. Yes. Now, at, the, at 1844, there is judgment that is taking place, not in the earthly sanctuary, but in the heavenly sanctuary. And judgment is not bad news. Mm -hmm. Judgment is good news because it is at that judgment that the sins are blotted out. And we as God's people are set free. Now, the, in Revelation 20, 22, verse 10 and 12, if that judgment period ended and we are not cleansed, then there is trouble. Because as the Bible says that, you know, the, they that are filthy and he that is filthy remain filthy still. But he that is righteous remain righteous still. So the saints are going to rejoice, but there will be no more forgiveness for the wicked. So God is going to judge them. And when I talk about judgment this time, is that he's going to destroy the wicked. Okay, I, I hear you clearly. And as we talk about this judgment and the decision making for or against Christ, we are also reminded of what Matthew 25 tells us about with the 10 virgins. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. It's a good one for application yes. Yes. to yes. us because all of them were classified as virgins. Yes. Mm -hmm. All of them were waiting for the bridegroom. Right. Yes. All of them had a little nap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of them had taken their lamps with them. Yes. But something made the division. Yes. The extra oil. Yes. yes. 
Yes, and we have to be so careful because it has to do with our decision as well. That's right. How closely we decide to walk with God yes. or how far from God we have decided to walk. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, we are reminded in this section of our study that the judgment has come. Yes. And I'm sure that based on what you have been hinting here and there and saying loudly sometimes what some don't quite hear it, you are also saying that right now, mm -hmm. as we speak and we study here, we are in the judgment period. Yes, that's yes. right. That's right. So God is taking note of everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus returns, Jesus is coming not to see whether you are right Mm -hmm. are wrong no. because he has already seen to that he'll that's be bringing right. the rewards yeah, that's right good news good news from the most holy place and I think we have plenty good news yes. from the most holy place Amen. but let's see what we are referring to specifically here as we look at Hebrews chapter 4 verses 14 to 16 seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with a feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Yes, I'm just wondering if Revelation chapter 11, verse 19 has something that is associated yes. with that passage as well. And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his, his, testi his testimony, mm -hmm. or, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and earthquake and great hail. All right, L let's do our comment on this now. In that first passage, in Hebrews chapter four, we are encouraged there. Mm -hmm. I, I suppose that's where a lot of the good news comes from. That's right. All right. Yes. And I, I think you would want to comment on that and put in the mix afterwards what is happening in Revelation chapter 11, as John in a vision saw something very special in heaven. So here's, here's Paul's great and wonderful news mm -hmm. that we have a high priest. Yes. Uh, and this is not just any high priest. We have a great high priest and he's Jesus himself. Yes. And he's ministering on behalf of all believers. So he, Paul is saying, he is touched with the feelings of our infirmities, meaning mm -hmm. that he understands, he understands our pain, our struggles, through. our yes. temptation, our sorrow. So it means that all of us now can come boldly to the throne of grace because there is help offered right there. There is help. And we don't need to run away. Now, the fact that the, 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 the plan of God is to get rid of sin, mm -hmm. we have to be willing to cooperate with him. Yes. Yeah? And so something is going on right there in the heavenly sanctuary that we need to pay attention to. Yes. You, you care to tell us what we need to pay attention to, Pastor Mort? The, the good news is that <laughs> Christ is in the, the most uh, holy place. And we can, as God's people, we can come boldly and receive forgiveness for our sins. Because, you know, he is our judge. He is... Um, I want to say he's our lawyer, but he's everything mm -hmm. to us. So let us not be afraid of going to him, but let us come to him boldly. Thank you. But let me be more specific now and go directly again. What is it that John saw in that vision? The, the ark, ark of, of the testimony. And what's, what's the significance of that? Well, the significance of, of that, that, that ark, you know, first of all, it has the Ten Commandments there, which is talking about justice. So he's a God of justice. But there also is mercy, the mercy right? It symbolizes mercy uh -huh. that is offered to everyone too. So John is saying, 
You don't have to worry. God is a God of justice, but he offers mercy right there in the sanctuary. Yes. That's right. And he, we are also reminded here that the judgment that is going on mm -hmm. in the sanctuary is judgment that has as its base the law of God. Amen. That's right. The That's law right. of God there yes. mm -hmm. in the ark. That's right. In the most holy yes. place yes. of the sanctuary. We, 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 you know, if we take this thing seriously, we will understand that this design, mm -hmm. this plan of salvation yes. has no loopholes no in it. No loophole. Everything. It is correct. Yes. is in place. Point. Yes. Jesus, our advocate in the judgment. It's what we have started to discuss already. Yes. So we will finish our discussion for this week, short though the time is, as we look at Hebrews chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Hebrews chapter 6, 19 and 20. I read in what Paul says, mm -hmm. which hope we have mm -hmm. as an anchor of the soul. Yes, sir. Both sure and steadfast, and which en entereth into that within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Yes, it seems like a very ordinary verse when we read it yes. on the surface without thinking about it. Mm -hmm. But when we think about it in its depth and its real understanding, notice what Paul is saying there to us as we to he talks about our advocate in the judgment. Your comment, Pastor. He, you know, Paul is, is making this thing to, to come home to us. Mm -hmm. No need to worry as sinners if we truly accept Jesus Christ as, as our savior and as our high priest. He's saying we have an anchor mm -hmm. and an anchor suggests uh, safety for you when you, when you when you get to shore. That's you don't right. have to worry. And he's saying it is going to be well. Jesus is our forerunner. He has entered and the fact that Jesus is touched with our feelings has, having gone through our own experience in, in dealing with temptations and he overcame, then he's the best person to defend us. Yes. And you don't have to worry because it is sure with Jesus Christ as our high priest. And when he talks about the, within the veil, yes. it brings us back to the whole you know, scenario Earthly of the sanctuary. sanctuary. That's right. The veil separating the holy place mm -hmm. from the most holy right. is there for us, Pastor yes. Mort. Yes. This is you know, good news because of a fact, we are all guilty. Mm -hmm. We are all sinned against it. Yes. And we cannot make ourselves righteous. Mm -hmm. We need somebody that is bigger than us. You mean a, a lawyer? A lawyer. All right. <laughs> <laughs> An advocate <laughs> that you know to stand in our stead yes. and talk on our behalf. Yes. And the good news is that we have such a one. And his name is Jesus Christ. He came, suffered, and now he is our sin bearer in the heavenly sanctuary. Thank you, pastors, for assisting the process this week in helping us to see a little bit more clearly light from the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And to our viewers, just want to say to you, we just hope that you have grasped enough from this brief study and from what you have studied before to anchor your faith in Jesus because he is our only hope. Remember to join us next week because we have more in this series of lessons to study and we can only depend on what God has prepared for us in his word to guide us through in these trying times. But remember, there's hope in King Jesus. Thanks to you viewers for joining us. Thanks to our pastors for sharing in this study. Thanks to our sponsor, Easy Deal Auto Sales and Tours Limited. Thanks to all who have made it possible for us to bring this study to you this week. Keep on studying God's word and join us now, I ask, in our closing prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the assurance of salvation. 
for the gift of your son Jesus and for the demonstration that there is power available for everyone who comes to you in faith. Thank you for the assurance that in the heavenly sanctuary, he is ministering on our behalf and each one who accepts all of your provision will be saved. So strengthen our faith, O Lord. Strengthen the faith of our viewers. And may each one get a little closer to you, walking in obedience through the power of your Holy Spirit. And may we experience the victory and that wonderful home that is prepared above for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.